Hey y'all, Irix guy here, and I don't wear short socks, and I don't short stocks. But what I'm going to talk about within this video is a new strategy for uh, 2023. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this video is for entertainment purposes only. It should not be considered a recommendation to buy or sell security. I'm sharing this in all videos for entertainment purposes only. With that being said, um, I've, I've pondered a lot of things in regards to the stock market. Now, I've been trading stocks, and I'm not a professional. I'm just a hobbyist. But I've been trading stocks since, uh, uh, let's see, the 1990s. So, you know, back before you had uh, online brokers and all of that. And, of course, the online brokers, they really changed the stock market game because now people were able to more quickly execute uh, trades. So it's, it's changed the way a lot of things work. And we've seen throughout the past few years, you know, if you followed the, the markets, in particular the OTC markets, over-the-counter bulletin board, you know, your pink sheets, the bottom of the barrel. But a lot of that stuff has changed. So although I've found penny stocks in the past to be entertaining i decided i wanted to branch out and identify a new strategy for self-entertainment and that strategy that i found and this was just a little bit of research and thinking well you know a lot of the a lot of the pink sheets now a lot of those are restricted from trading with a lot of brokers so you know it becomes problematic when you're when you're scanning pink sheet OTC stocks and a lot of them you can't even trade so it's you know it's a lot of time wasted I mean you know I, I do I perform my research by looking at uh, at at volume and price per share spreadsheets at the end of uh, at the end of the day so at night I'll I'll take spreadsheets and I'll look at the volume because you know as most people say volume before price meaning that if a stock doesn't have volume you know it's not going to move up or down you got to have interest whether it's positive or negative or a combination of both so i'd look for volume actives and then i would look for a certain price per share historically i found the triple zero pink sheet stocks to be the most entertaining and those were, you know, obviously triple zero one through triple zero nine price per share. You know, so a fraction of a penny. Bottom of the barrel. But, you know, I mean, some of those, you get lucky. It's, it's a gamble. So, 2023. What is my new strategy for 2023? And I want to I throw this out there. A lot of people... Back when GME did its thing, I had a video, and feel free to check it out. Uh, what is seller boxing? C-E-L-L-A-R, boxing. Seller like the basement, not somebody that's getting rid of something. So what is seller boxing? So, you know, I posted a video here on my channel about that many years ago. Probably, what, about 10 or 11 years ago now at the time of filming this in 2023. So, you know, that was back when I was really interested in penny stocks. That was way before the GME thing, but a lot of big trading groups picked up that video of mine and thought that I was some sort of penny stock savant and that I had predicted what happened to GME many years later. So. You know, take that for what it's worth, but it got me to think, and I'm like, well, if I thought that way 10 or 11 years ago, you know, these penny stocks, especially the pink sheets, that was some of the most formal entertainment that I've ever received, you know, with stocks, because the penny stocks, more, much more volatile, and typically, they're pump and dumps, typically, someone will lose it all but 
it really entertained me and I learned more about how the markets work. So in 2023, and y'all are probably like, dude, you're just rambling, man. You know, get to the point. Well, I'm out here walking, man. I'm trying to get, make myself less fat. Got to lose some weight. Got to get in good shape. So if I do get lucky and if I do get lucky and make a ton of money, then maybe I'll go somewhere to the beach, you know, go to the beach somewhere. So, but anyway, so 2023, and again, I'll caution everybody again, this is for entertainment purposes only. It should not be considered a recommendation to buy or sell security. But in 2023, my strategy is different. So yes, I will still screen the OTC stocks at night. You know, your OTCQB, OTCQX, pink sheets. I'll still screen those at night, but they're no longer at the top of the totem pole. What I'm really interested in now are distressed companies that are, that are potentially heavily shorted. And what I mean by that, and you can research this on your own. Again, this video is for entertainment purposes only. But if you look at 52-week high and low, and you look at some of the big boards, one of, one of the ones I like the most is NASDAQ. But you got, you know, a few popular ones. You got NASDAQ, American Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, you know, NYSE, AMEX, and NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is where I find a lot of stuff. And when I find stocks that are at or very close to the 52-week low, particularly ones that have fallen below a dollar a share, because there's a certain threshold, and, you know, you got to research this on your own. This video is just for entertainment purposes, but there's a certain threshold with most uh, exchanges like NASDAQ if the price per share falls below a certain amount that the entity often receives a warning and you know they they can if they know they're out the door what will often happen is that that company if it if it doesn't uh go bankrupt that company will often uh they'll often downgrade to the otc markets so you know if they were on the big boards like nasdaq Amex or Nice, then they would often go down to the to the to the uh, OTC market. So that's that's not well perceived by most uh, by most investors. That's kind of like a, and it's not always the case, but it signals that it's kind of a nail in the coffin. You know, they've it without confirmation. It suggests that the company is very distressed and it couldn't. Uh, couldn't recover to meet or exceed the listing requirements. So when that happens, you know, a lot of times companies will, um, they'll, you know, they'll restructure. You know, they'll try to reduce operating costs. They will do a lot of things to try to remain listed on that big board. Sometimes they'll reverse split. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things that they'll attempt. But what's interesting, when I look at these 52-week high-low ranges on the big boards, and obviously I'm, I'm concerned with the at or near the 52-week low, then the research evolves into trying to determine how much short interest there is. So, again, it's for entertainment purposes only, but you need to re you, if you want to entertain yourself, check out uh, shorting stocks. Now, I never short. I, again, I don't wear short socks, and I don't short stocks. And the reason I don't is that with shorting, the person that's acquiring shares is essentially setting themselves up for the possibility of somewhat infinite loss. Whereas trading the traditional way, typically one would probably only lose, say they threw $10 at something. Trading traditionally, they would probably only lose $10, you know, plus commission, whatever that may be. So I don't short, but a lot of, 
a lot of hedge funds and a lot of uh, wealthy and speculative investors, some of which do really well, they do that. So if you find a stock that seems to have a lot of short interest, basically what that means is this. At a high level, those people that are shorting stocks, should that price continue to go down, they're doing well. And they could potentially, you know, cash out and, and uh, potentially make a profit. But in the scenario of, say, a, let's just say a stock, this is all hypothetical for entertainment purposes only, but say a stock that was near or close to the 52-week low, and then maybe they had a, and this stock, by this fictitious stock, by the way, has a, has a huge uh, short interest. There's a lot of people that are shorting the stock. So it's beaten down, it's distressed, but then this hypothetical company released an ext- releases an extremely positive press release. You know, something like crazy profitability, uh, cr- uh, you know, a, a new uh, merger, any sort of extremely positive news can take a distressed, a seemingly distressed stock and really rocket it. So in that scenario, let's just say this fictitious company was 10 cents US dollars a share. Let's say that the the, the 52-week high and low for this fictitious company was the low, let's say the 52-week low was 8 cents. It's trading at 10 cents right now. But the 52-week high was $75 a share. So in the scenario where positive news is released, what could potentially happen is the people that were short the stock, they could then be in a position to where what, what you would have to call is uh, cover your shorts. And in that scenario, that means that the people that were shorting it with the expectation of the, uh, the price per share plummeting, when it turns in the other direction, and it's rising rapidly, those people that are short are in a rush to exit because every bit that that stock increases in price per share, people that are short, not just people, but hedge funds and, you know, that you've heard of institutional investors. When they're short, they've got to cover their shorts. So as that stock goes up for the shorties, the people that are shorting the stock to exit, they're having to, <laughs> it's getting more and more expensive for them. You know, it's not like a traditional stock trader that, you know, they get in at 10 cents and it, it goes down to a penny. Oh, wow. They lost nine cents potentially plus commission. But a shorter, <laughs> if they, if they, uh, you know, they, they, it's going in the opposite direction. So when that happens, it can create a market condition. And again, this is all for entertainment purposes only. It's all hypothetical. But it could potentially create a market condition referred to as a short squeeze. And when and if a short sque- squeeze occurs, people that got in low in this hypothetical situation you know, at or close to the 52-week low in this hypothetical situation, eight cents a share. Let's say they got in at eight cents. If the short squeeze occurs, this fictitious stock, and again, these numbers are all made up, but we said the the 52-week high, I think, was $75. So let's say it just goes to a dollar. That's still a huge opportunity for, for profit. Let's say it goes to fifty dollars. Oh man, those fictitious people that got in at eight cents a share, if they were able to get out, whoa. So you can see here, the fifty-two week high and low is a why I'm kind of interested in it. Why I find it to be entertaining, and it's not. It's not because it's risk-free. It's definitely not. 
you know, expect to lose it all because that's probably what's going to happen. But it is interesting because in these scenarios, especially when you've got companies that are perceived as distressed that want to, that proactively want to work to maintain their listing with the big boards, NASDAQ, MX, NICE, etc. If they really want to do that, companies can turn around. So that's my new strategy for 2023. Again, entertainment purposes only. You know, just to recap, I like to scan. I like to look for beaten down, perceived as being distressed, big board stocks that are at or near the 52-week low, preferably ones that seem to have a sizable short interest. And the reason that is, as I mentioned earlier, if they do have a sizable short interest and a positive or perceived positive material event occurs, it could result in a short squeeze. And if you're on the, if you're not on the short, short seller side of the short squeeze, a short squeeze can be a very entertaining event to, to be part of, or just watch from the sidelines. So again, hope you found this video to be entertaining. You know, again, I, I don't wear short socks and I don't short stocks. I don't, never have, never care to. But I do appreciate the people that short stocks because if it wasn't for them, the opportunity of a short squeeze would not exist. So hope you found this video to be entertaining. If you did like this video, subscribe, share with others, and check out my penny stock videos playlist i've got a ton of videos now and a lot more coming soon again this is for entertainment purposes only it should not be considered a recommendation to buy or sell security i'm just having a good time man tell me what you think and y'all have a good day